Oh, it's on fire. Fire bad. Hello and welcome to Furious Driving. I'm here in the barn today with Hippo the Freelander and Hippo the Freelander is very much in disgrace today because, well, it's unusual that the Freelander is over here tucked away in the barn during, excuse me, during the winter time because this is the floods, mud, dirt and general grottiness car that we have for this time of year. But no, Hippo is in disgrace because Hippo, Hippo tried to kill me the other day. So naughty hippo, hippo, very bad hippo at the minute. I was driving over here at the weekend and uh, as I was driving out through town and into the, the lanes, because I'm over in the countryside here and the last bit of this journey is very narrow single track lanes. And I put my foot on the pedal for to brake and uh, nothing happened. The pedal just went straight to the floor. I've had that happen before and it is a teeny bit disconcerting. Um, yeah, when you suddenly realize you're in a ton and a half of metal, which is continuing on its merry way towards the scenery and potentially oncoming vehicles. It's a little bit worrying. Um, normally, well, so normally when I've had that happen, on previous occasions when I've had that happen, it's been in a manual car. And so you just dip the clutch and the car stops trying to propel itself, pull on the handbrake and you can cease your momentum. This though is an automatic and my long litany of things I hate about automatic cars got another tick on it. One of the things I already said about not liking automatic gearbox cars is that if something goes wrong, you've got no control and no override. And that's exactly what I found. And it's vaguely terrifying. I was relieved though it has got a proper handbrake in there because if it had one of those stupid electronic button things, I would have been completely stuffed because yeah, that's proved to override you and say, nope, you're more than five miles now, I'm not putting the handbrake on. But no, because it's got a proper manual handbrake, I could, I could pull the thing to a halt. Unfortunately, where I was, I couldn't stop anywhere. There was nowhere safe to stop. I'd have just caused a roadblock. So I just trundled on at sort of 10 miles an hour, knocking it into neutral and pulling the handbrake on until I got up here to the farm. Fortunately, it was so close to here when it went. It was safer to carry on than cause a roadblock. Got underneath the bonnet and found that there was no uh, brake fluid left in the thing. And this is what I found when I looked underneath the car, having reversed it very gingerly into the barn. I've got to say also, reversing an automatic car into a precision location like this is also a bit of a squeaky bum moment because all you can do is hold it on the handbrake, put it into reverse, and then it'll stop moving with the handbrake on and then gradually moderate the handbrake and knock it in and out of neutral to keep the thing moving. It's not a fun experience. Anyway, so yeah, looked it on, so I looked under the floor and it turned out that the back wheel was covered in brake fluid down here, this one, the uh, driver's side rear which I suspect means one of two things has happened. Either a brake pipe has failed, but the location of all that brake fluid suggests to me it's not that, it's so localized within the wheel itself. I think we have in fact lost a wheel cylinder. So I'm gonna pop that wheel off and have a look. Ooh, I'm done. And of course a bit of percussive maintenance as well. Well, that one is, that's so worn out. The cross point thingy is really not doing anything. Oh no, that's gonna be a problem. This one is absolutely mullered. There's no real cross to it anymore. And it does not want to come undone. Arr! You know that old phrase, you're only one broken bolt away from a five minute job turning into a 19 hour ordeal. This is the second thing I've tried to unscrew and already it's, it's not so much it's frozen in place, it's just there's, there's no way of getting purchase on it because a previous uh, endeavourer with this particular thing has absolutely ruined the, the head of it so I can't get anything to grip in there. So I'm gonna have to drill it out. Unfortunately, because I'm at the barn, I haven't got that many tools over here. So I've not got a drill over here and I haven't got one of those impact things where you hammer it and it twists the impact on dewy things, you know, we hit it and it undoes stuff. Um, so my, my work here is done, but not in a good way. I'm gonna have to go home and get some other tools, but at least I now know what I need to go and order. So I'm going to order a brake wheel cylinder because I'm 99% certain that's what's exploded inside there. Hello again, it's another day. I've come back and I've brought with me an impacty thumpy thing and I've brought back an impact wrench because you know we're going to try and get this thing off. To brought over also heat induction tool because this thing is remarkably good at freeing off recalcitrant bolts. And believe it or not, this is the easy bit at the beginning. I hate it when the easy bit at the beginning becomes the hardest part, and that's just a precursor to everything else being dreadful. 
okay, been battling this thing, trying to get heat into it for quite a while. And <coughs> yes, finally, guess what's not going back in the car later. Thank you, heat induction tool. Once again, you've saved the day, as always. Right now, apparently it's very easy to just lever this off. Oh, blimey, yeah, she is. <laughs> I did not expect that to be the case. I was very much expecting this to be another battle of wills with a recalcitrant piece of pig iron. But no, this is actually quite, well, so easy. It's, it's going one way and then going back the other way again. There we go. Wow. Wow. It's Greg Thingy. Okay, so let's have a look inside here. Oh, okay, so this is the inside of the rear. You can see where it's absolutely soaking up here around the, uh, the wheel cylinder. Got a new one up over there. Got a new one to replace it with. That's the union on the back of it, which is naturally quite rusty. So that should unbolt and that should then come off. Then we can replace that. Thing is though, and I thought it's just occurring to me, if these brake shoes are soaked in brake fluid, are they still gonna be any good? Do I need to replace them as well? But I do need the jumbo amount of brake cleaner to go and tidy that all up. Right, so here is the new brake cylinder. Well, hang on. Yes, it is the right one. Okay, does not come though with new little bolts to hold it into the car. So let's hope the old ones are savable because they do look kind of crusty. Okay, these two bolts that hold the uh, wheel cylinder in place are in fact eight millimeters. So dinky wee things, I've soaked them in Bulldog and I'm hoping it's gonna be enough. Come on, this is a bit of a crust fest down here. This could shear off quite easily. I just realized I can't even get the socket down there. I need an eight millimeter spanner to get to that one. Jeez, how am I gonna do that? Interesting development. It turns out that's actually not an eight millimeter. It's slightly smaller and, and it's an Imperial. It is a, what is it, seven sixteenths? No, five, five sixteenths, which is a made up tiny size, not even real. I hope I've got a spanner in that size. Is that turning? Or is that just, no, it's just rotating on the spanner. Of course it is. Ow. Hit myself in the face. Uh, heat tool again. Let's see if we can cook this one out at least. I'm not that worried about boiling the brake fluid because I'm gonna have to replace a load of it anyway. There's probably none in this corner of the car anyhow, is there? Oh, you little so-and-so, come on. I'm trying to turn. It does not want to come undone. It's just so rusted in there. Ah, uh, funny thing, I was just talking to Chris, the mobile mechanic friend. Funny thing, I was just talking to Chris, my mobile mechanic friend about this, uh, saying what I was up to this afternoon. And uh, he said he had a Fiesta with the same problem this week. And the thing was, the um, corrosion behind the wheel cylinder had actually pushed it away and caused the thing to, to leak. Look at this, I hadn't noticed that, but that would explain why the bolts are so tight and also, why they're at such a weird angle. <laughs> that is actually pulling through. That is actually pushing away from the back plate, isn't it? You shouldn't be able to put a screwdriver between the back plate and the wheel cylinder, should you? That should just be tight on there. Yeah, take a look at that. You can actually see in the middle just there, that is the bleed nipple and it's pulled so far through you couldn't actually get a spanner onto it to loosen it off. Well, another day, another car move. The struggle is real. And we're in this corner now, in the dark corner, but at least we're away from the draft of the door and close enough for the heater to plug in. Uh, we've had to move the Alpha over there because it's Rustival in a couple of days time and the Alpha is gonna be heading off to Birmingham or Gaydon to go to the, the big show. The big show, if you remember Steve Wright. Good old Steve Wright. And um, yeah, looking where this has been parked for the last 24 hours, you can see that there is still clearly a certain amount of juice falling out the back of this car. And my patience has gone from taking smaller and smaller, more delicate uh, kind of spanners to bringing angle grinder and massive hammer. So let's get this thing back off again and just cut that thing off. At least one of these is easy to cut off so I can get that into there and get that blade on that. One is an easy one. I'm probably gonna have to make this new brake line as well because that is not coming undone at either end. That's just causing me trouble. A mini grinder really to get into here.
Okay, so the end of the bolt's off. Is the actual bolt itself enough off? Kind of hard to tell it's smooth. I was thinking, why is that light really dim? It's because we're in shaded safety glasses. A bit tricky, a bit tricky. Put this up out of range of smack distance. Can I take this off with a lump hammer and a Apparently that's the toughest M6 bolt in history. Well, do you know what? It turns out extreme violence is always the answer. We have now, oops, now lost the other bolt that's taken off. Um, I'm just being held on now by this uh, slightly crusty brake hard line, which does not want to come undone. So I'm going to cut that off and then use a socket to kind of work that out of the, uh, the block over there. Cause that is just not, I'm doing it either end. And that's all that's holding it in place now. Also, I have been slightly confused by that little spring clip down by the uh, impact wrench. I could not, it was lying in the bottom of the brakes when I first uh, took the drum off and I couldn't work out where it had come from. I realized there's another one the same as just here and it's the pin that should be holding this shoe against the back plate and I'm missing that pin. So that's a curious little thing to find missing, isn't it? So I guess that um, spring clip must have worked loose and then the retaining pin just kind of just fell out the back and is somewhere on the road, somewhere in the UK, I guess. Well, I assume you can buy them separately. <laughs> These fixings at either end of this little short hard line are just not turning at all. They're just so, so corroded in. Nothing can move them. They just, and every time I touch them with the spanner, it just breaks it. I'm gonna have to cut this short end off. Okay, that's now free. Now this should be free as well. Come on you so and so, why are you not moving still? Just gushing fluid everywhere. There shouldn't be any bolts holding you to anything anymore. Cry out loud. Uh, the reason it won't come off, there's a tiny fragment, like a little jutting out bit of that first bolt I cut off that isn't quite free. And so that's what's stopping it all coming apart. Thank you. I want to go home now. This thing, this crusted up pile of muck is what's caused this car to be completely undrivable and cost me about three days of fighting. Oh, my eyes just pouring fluid over me everywhere now. Right, a fresh cup of tea. So this is the state of the back plate, thick with goop. Let's give that a bit of a clean up, don't we, first, before we do anything else. Okay, so that is the nubbin that is left. I've quickly cut this off. Now, rather foolishly, I did forget to bring the uh, heat induction tool over because, well, I didn't think I'd be needing it today. Right, so I've done my best to clean up as much potentially flammable stuff in here, and now we're going with the dangerous blue flame. It's on fire, fire bad. And that is why you always keep a fire extinguisher close on hand. Because I thought I cleaned up all of the brake cleaner and everything else that was around there. Clearly I hadn't done enough because <coughs> as soon as it started going, it didn't want to stop. Okay, so having survived our fire bad moment, um, I've gone and got the induction heat tool because it's less likely to blow the car up. Um, that's why I don't often use actual flame because even when you think you've got the place nice and clean, you can still be not clean and stuff can still go wrong. I can't find a socket of any form, Whitworth, AF, <laughs> Imperial metric, you name it. I've got so many sets of, of sockets, nothing is going onto this and gripping it tightly. Uh, the closest I can get is this weirdly shaped one, which, <clears throat> I'll tell you what, boiling brake fluid does not smell nice, um, which will not hammer on properly. So I think I might wind up actually winding this up with mole grips, vice grips if you're in America. All right, that thing is literally cherry red now. Just in literally a couple of seconds, I can get this to the point where it is like a little red glow ball. Let's try and hammer a thing on there without burning myself completely. I guess I can't hammer it on. Who knew? This is just rotating. It is, it's just rotating the blooming. 
Son of a... Ugh. Right, okay, let's try this again. There we go, that is insanely hot now. Right. That's hot enough to actually injure people. Go on, turn. Yes, that is coming out. Oh, thank goodness. Finally, that is actually coming out at last. This has been an adventure I do not want to repeat. Now, I've said this before, whenever you undo one of these things with a heat tool, do not jump in with your fingers to start undoing it because you think, oh, it's fine to undo now because that is still red hot inside there. Right, now I can pop up to the workbench upstairs and make a new bit of brake pipe. Right, so this is a whole bunch more brake line and this is a little bit, I just cut off it with the uh, little brake line cutty tool thing, um, which I brought along because I kind of anticipated we might have to do this situation. This is the old stuff, which is looking pretty sorry for itself, new stuff, which is looking a bit more friendly. Uh, we'll have to kind of bend this into the roughly the right shape in a moment. So first of all, we may make sure we put these things onto the pipe, otherwise we're gonna have a problem. And then we're gonna find the appropriate sized uh, hoo-ha dilly for this stuff. So well, since I've done it, but we'll bear with. How does that look? Oh, lovely, that's a nice job. Right, so there we have got a new brake pipe. Right, finally, after about three days, things are starting to come together. I've had to cut down with the grinder um, a couple of M6 bolts so that I can actually attach this thing into the car. I'll fit some copper slip on them. And the trick with cutting down bolts, put a little nut further down the thread, and then when you cut it off, you can wind it off and clear the burrs out, which is really handy. And also, I'll put some copper slip on there, so if I do have to take these off again in the future, it won't be such a massive fight. I mean, three days for a Lem6 bolt is a bit much, really, isn't it? Now, I have now lost my nice new bit of brake pipe that I just made. I put it down somewhere safe a minute ago, and now it's disappeared. Right, there we go. That is actually in there. That's really easy. Right, got wet hands now, because I've covered in brake cleaner. So, oh, fantastic. All nice, new, shiny hardware that isn't so rotten that it just dissolves when you put a spanner near it. This is such a novelty. Well, this is a curious thing. Uh, as soon as this thing bolts onto the back plate and tightens up, it tilts, it sits at a funny angle, so you can't actually get uh, onto the bleed um, thingamajig. That's really odd. I can't see why, because it fits up like it's going to fit properly. Then as soon as you actually tighten it up, it twists at a funny angle. The base is flat, the back plate looks flat. I can't see why it would do that. Very strange. Yeah, when you hold it in place, Oh, there is a weird rock on it though. That's odd. That's very, do I need a new back plate on this thing? Is this rotted too badly to, to work properly anymore? This actually has a small curve on it. It looks like it's kind of pulled around. I'm gonna to try that, see if that screws together better. Right, I've whacked it with a hammer a bit and done a little bit of flattening on the back where it actually sits down to it, but it's still sitting at a ridiculous angle. Honestly, I don't know how on earth you would bleed it because the bleed thing does not come through far enough. I think what you'd have to do is leave the drum off, leave it slack, bleed it, then tighten it up, and then put the drum back on. That's the only way you're gonna get around that. That's madness. Anyway, I can't put the drum back on now because I'm still missing that pin. You can buy these pipes off the shelf for 18 pounds. I've made it too short. That's very irritating. I'll go and do it again. Right, so the wheel cylinder is fitted in. Uh, the new brake pipe is fitted in as well. It all looks very smart, except it's sitting at a wackadoodle angle and it means that bleeding is only gonna be possible if I slacken off the res retaining, restraining bolts. So good, but bad. I'm gonna have to go and have a think about this. A wheel cylinder in a drum brake shouldn't be a two-parter. But even if I was to call it uh, finished right now, but I couldn't finish it even if I wanted to right now because I haven't got that retaining pin which has dropped out somewhere, I guess on the A14 or something. It's just vanished into thin air. Might be in Yorkshire, might be in Suffolk, who knows? It could be anywhere in the country right now. I'm gonna do a little bit of Googling because I don't know why that is sitting at such a funny angle because the old one was also sitting at that weird cockamamie angle as well, which makes me think that maybe I'm missing a part. Maybe someone's put this back together in the past, missing some kind of shim or something. Um, 
bit weird really. Yeah, so I'm going to count my blessings the car didn't burn down and take the bomb with it. Um, I did go and buy a new fire extinguisher in the meantime. Uh, I'm also, well, since I'm going to be bleeding the brakes and everything anyway, I'm going to change the front discs and pads because they are, I think, due for a change on this car anyhow as well. So yeah, and I might have to go and change the, whoops, I probably have to change those rear shoes also. So amazingly, changing something as simple as a drum cylinder, which is a 20 pound, I think about 20 quid part, and just two M6 bolts and uh, brake union has turned into three days of fighting and an impossible to finish job without extra parts. Uh, this is mind blowing. It does actually, and as much as I do like this car an awful lot, and I do think the Freelanders are another potential future plastic classic, it does make me wonder how long term I want to be hanging on to Hippo um, if everything else in this car is going to be as difficult to undo because that was a heck of a fight. And looking at all the other fixings around the floor of the car, that's also going to be quite tricky as well. So maybe it might be time to think about uh, getting a different Freelander or a different early off-roader for just classic, classic holiday use. But anyway, hmm, food for thought, as they say. Anyway, thank you for watching. And um, this will be one of the penultimate videos before Rustaville. If you are going to come up to say hello and enjoy the day up there, and I'll see you at the weekend and in the next video. Like and subscribe and head to furiousdriving.co.uk, the merch store. Because we've got to sell that merch to keep paying for bits for this stupid old car. Mm -hmm.